Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where John Cole and I meet with one of our favorite people, Bill Jordan, the old philosopher. The old hey, philosopher. Now, you guys start all of your podcasts with one of our favorite guests. Yes, we do. Yes. We're, we're all your favorite. We actually we have about to six. Our only favorite guests. We, we yeah. have yeah. about six favorite guests. We're, we actually, the truth of the matter is, is that we have some really terrific people over the years who've become regulars, and we just enjoy talking to them. So, uh, yeah, you guys have And great we've ones. added you to the list. Uh, it was a close call. It was always a close call whether or not you were going to become a favorite, but you just boom, like a rocket. Yeah, I fall the other way with other people, but that's okay. I just appreciate you guys having me on and, and uh, just sharing ideas and chatting and uh, spreading the word about embracing the boom and encouraging and inspiring and uh, baby boomers. And uh, yeah. I think we still have a lot to offer. That's why we're here. Yep, it is. So one of the things I love, Bill, is your... We, we can kind of consider you a philosopher. You always give us great perspective on things. Well, you know, I, I think I have gravitated to perspective, and that's probably coming from a position of being older and looking back and seeing, seeing my younger friends or family members <clears throat> struggling with things that I now look back at. Same thing that was, I, I, feel, I feel almost like I'm my dad. That my dad, I, I can when I say something to someone or I do something, I can. It's almost like I feel that I am my dad. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, can all relate to those commercials time. that talk. They told their, the kids becoming their their, their parents uh, in the commercial. Well, I think there's a, there's a lot to that, yeah, and yeah. you realize just how much they knew. So my dad, one of his, I don't know if it was one of his favorite things he used to say, but it's one of my favorite things he used to say because now I get it. Everything's going to be all right. Mm. Okay. Everything's going to be bad philosophy, you know. So anyway, yeah, some perspective I wanted to share with you guys today. Back when I was doing radio, and I don't know how many years ago this was, one day a group of young Russian broadcasters, like young people, I'm going to say 20s, mm -hmm. uh, came through the station and they were part of a thing. They'd been over to our TV station. They brought them over to the, the radio side of things, and I got a chance to talk to them a little bit. And I asked them through the interpreter, and there were some who spoke English. What was the what was the thing that stood out most to them about America and or Americans? You will never guess what number one is, but I'm gonna let you try. Coca-Cola. Young Russians, the number the, the 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 like the most impactful thing that they thought of when they came here that they were amazed by. Not Coca-Cola, not blue jeans. I don't know. Movies. No, it's something I would have never thought of. Huh. The size of our plates. Really? That's think good. about that. The size of our dinner plates. They could yes. not believe how big our plates are. The second most impactful thing was they could not believe how much we wasted or threw away. Wow. Mm, think yeah. about that. Whether that's, that's whether that's food, because again, the size of our plates, or yeah. just stuff. They could not believe how much we throw away. And then the third thing, they could not believe how Americans volunteer to help others. Wow. Talk about perspective, huh? Yeah. Now, how, how, long, how long ago was this? I don't know. 10, 13, 14 years. Mm. So, it's, it's people, so they were coming to the land of plenty. Yeah. And uh, I've heard, by the way, uh, in a similar vein, that uh, people, uh, and I, I think I was watching something on Nigerian uh, immigrants, uh, talking about supermarkets and the amount of selection just overwhelmed uh, their senses walking into a supermarket. Yeah. They've never seen that much food ever in one place. Well, hey, guys, I, I think we've actually done this before about how mm. there are too many choices now. We've got yeah. so much stuff. You go down the, 
there's an aisle of deodorant now. There's a whole aisle of different scents of deodorant. Yeah. There's, I mean, even when you, I go down the beer aisle and there's some guy staring at the beer, it's like, man, there's too many choices. There used to be what? Pabst and Budweiser and yeah. Milwaukee. And Ballantyne. And Ballantyne, right. and, and that was it. Now you got a wall and it's, it's fine, but I'm just saying we live in a land of super plenty. Yeah. And um, that was just some great perspective shared with me by some young Russian folks, young Russian broadcasters. Do you, that, do you uh, guys remember? Uh, I think about pretty often. Do you remember a movie starring Robin Williams called Moscow on the Hudson? You know, I never yeah. saw it. I remember the movie. I never saw it. Wonderful, wonderful little movie. And the premise was uh, Robin Williams is a Russian, comes to America and cannot believe how much there is of everything. And one of the scenes is him in a grocery store mm -hmm. freaking out at the, the fact that not that only there were lots of choices, but that the shelves were full. You know, that, yep. that we, yeah. we had enough material to put on the shelves. Yeah, well, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to write that down. I'll definitely check out Moscow and the Hudson, Robin it, Williams. It's you a know, very in addition to being film. brilliant, in addition to being a brilliant uh, co comedian, uh, and a friend of mine pointed this out to me. Oftentimes, comedians make great actors because their sense of timing and reaction is so refined. And I thought he was a tremendous actor as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. He was, he was especially when he did uh, one of those things where he was a a doctor with a red nose and. <laughs> that made his patients feel really good. Uh, yeah. yeah, he did a lot of dramatic stuff. But anyway, getting back to your your uh, your uh, uh, visitors, uh, were you ever able to keep in touch with them or return the visit uh, to uh, to Russia? No, no, I never. You know, they I, I saw them that one day and they were gone. Um, uh, we had a couple of guys from Poland many years ago that I kept in touch with a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we just you know, kind of, you know, faded apart. Um, but I do like that that foreign perspective. Yeah. Um, and you if know, you ever do get a chance to, you know, to visit another country, you visited England, which I think is a great first country for us to visit because, A, they they kind of speak our language. Uh, and it's very similar. Just watch when you cross the street, look everywhere. Right. Um, but it, it's you still, no matter how much you love your travel, you still love, to, at least I do, I love coming home to America. Yeah. Oh yeah, because you like the big plates, obviously. We all we all <laughs> seem to. Do you remember <clears throat> speaking of big plates? Do you remember the trend? Now this has got to be twenty or more years ago that the culinary trend where they started little bitty servings in the middle of a big plate. It was kind of a gourmet thing. Like this is so special, you don't want more too much of it. You know that kind of thing. Right. Yeah, that made the plates just look bigger to me. <laughs> no, I'm sure the I, Russians wouldn't have liked it. I, it I, I can see, you know, especially from uh, now, uh, uh, where we have some current perspective with with Russia, uh, but it, going back uh, 30 years or so, I remember seeing on TV from time to time pictures of Russian supermarkets where the shelves were virtually empty. They couldn't keep them stocked with anything. Uh, if anything, they had bread because uh, they produced a lot of wheat, which they still do uh, today. But uh, meat, meat and dairy products and um, uh, all sorts of uh, vegetables and things like that, it was almost devoid uh, of any of those products on their shelves. Yeah. And from time to time, people would be doing a story about, uh, you know, how their economy uh, doesn't work and they can't uh, fill. So I could see where... Uh, the uh, the excesses of the United States, and you know, we take it for granted. Uh, even out, uh, I don't know whether you have it on the East Coast. On the West Coast, we have something called Claim Jumper, which has not only big plates but oversized proportions, where most people either leave them leave leave over and throw it out, as as you pointed out, or um, uh, it's just too much food for anybody to eat. I mean, it would feed a family of six in perhaps any other nation. So. Sure. Uh, even uh, even during the during the pandemic, our grocery uh, stores really were not empty by any right. means. You know, there was some shortages. Um, you couldn't get certain things, but uh, I never went into an empty store. Right, right. 
Yeah. And typically the shortages were not food items. They were the toilet paper and all that stuff. And by the way, and we don't seem to have or have ever had in this country, at least in the 20th and uh, now 21st centuries, uh, a, a, um, a uh, lack of uh, overweight people. flu. So uh, it's not like we're running out of food. No, we're not. No, no way. Um, and thank God, not only for us baby boomers, but for the American capitalist system that allows and, people to keep making more products, even if they're not needed. And let me toast to your oversized cup. Product that's... How big is this cup? Here's your another. Here's your product. It's not needed. <laughs> it's the What's it's a half gallon? Hey guys, <laughs> thanks for letting me share with you today. Live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.